Welcome back to the railroad, everyone. This video is for our good friend Sandy, and it will be to explain how to use the Revolution Train Engineer 2.4 GHz RC unit that is installed in this GP9, little Jeep 9. And uh, it also has a Phoenix, I think this is a P8 soundboard in it. This will be a how-to video to operate the controller and all the little intricacies about the engine she's going to receive. So let's get to it. So. Here is the Revolution Train Engineer 2.4 GHz. It's a bi-directional communication, which means it has a transmitter and a receiver. Now, if you're in a crowd where everybody's using these, it's a good option to put your name on a name tag here. So you don't get it mixed up with other people's. To get into the battery case, you slide the unit up, you'll hear it click. Now, I have already put three batteries in here. Do not leave batteries in the transmitter for more than one to two weeks at a time. These batteries are alkalines. They will tend to go bad on you. Now, these supposedly are good until March of 2034. So you put in two batteries. The positive goes up in the two outside ones. The positive goes down on the center one. And it's obvious because the other ends have springs on them. Okay, your case just slides back into place. To power the unit up, press the power unit. You'll hear a tune and it will come on. Now, you have what they call cabs on here. That is your train engine. We will get into setting whether it's a single unit or an MU, a multiple unit. L49 right now is the signal that it's using to connect with the engine. You have 50 different signals you can use. And right now you only have six cabs. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna leave it on number zero for right now. That's the one we'll be setting up today. Your road number, you can change that. We'll get into settings in a little bit. The DL is your delay in seconds before it reacts which you want to have that up a ways. The 100% that this reads now is how fast the engine will go when you push the throttle all the way to the top. You can set your percentage down to whatever you want. If you let kids run the trains and you don't want it to go above 50%, you set that to 50. We'll get into that also. Now your speed is whenever you push the up button, the speed increases. Right now it's set to uh, one mile per hour per push of the button. You can change that. We'll get into settings later. Your direction is the direction that it's sending the engine. Whether this is forward or reverse, you won't know until you increase the speed and get your engine to move. Once your engine's moving, then you'll know which direction this is. To change the direction, bring it down to zero by decreasing your speed and then press the opposite button from the direction. And now you'll be going in the opposite direction. We're gonna skip these two. Right now, we'll go into no link. That's because we have not connected this to an engine yet. When it's connected to an engine, and we'll show you this in a bit, it will say link. Now, 3.45 volts. You'll notice on the battery scale, that's low. At about 3.3 or 3.4, it'll actually shut off and you'll need to replace the batteries. Now, we know what the four arrows are for. Your stop or enter key is an enter key when we're doing the um, setup on this. However, if you've got an engine running and you have an emergency where you have to stop it right now, you can press this stop button and it will stop your engine immediately. The problem with that is if you hit the emergency button the stop button, it could break the gears in your engine. It is better never to use that stop button and always to decrease speed by pressing the down arrow. Now, you saw me 
use these two buttons. This is your tab right, tab left, to go from one cab to the other. If it's cab zero, then we you go over here and we start pressing cab one, cab two, cab three, cab four. And that is the different engines that you can connect to this transmitter. To bring it back, you just press the other side, cab three, cab two, cab one, cab zero. So we're going to use cab zero. The numbered keys uh, we'll get into after a little bit. There is another important key down here at the bottom. It says all stop. If you're running multiple engines, if you have two engines connected to this, they're both running and you need to stop both of them immediately. Again, you could break the gears, but you can press this all stop button and it stops everything that's connected to this unit that's running. Time to get in and program your engine. Okay, so you see that this is L49. That is the link address, and you have 50 link addresses. It starts with 00, and 49 is the highest one. You can use any of these. First, if you're going to program in a new engine, you press Menu. This is the main setup menu. It's assigned functions, it functions is what we want. So we're going to assign functions. We press Enter. This is the round center button, Enter. Link address. Which one do we want to use? For this example, we're just going to use number 49. Okay, so we'll leave it there. The uh, RX type or receiver type is on board, and that's what we're going to be in using. It is an on board receiver. Now, the name. It shows up as L49 because that's your address. But the name of this is actually a GP9. So we're going to go down here and find G and start tabbing through until we get G. Then we're going to eliminate the space bar, which is this down key. And, oops, it moved off. Now to move it back, we move back. And that's a P, so we want P, GP, and now I'll eliminate that and leave the 9. So it's a GP9. They call them Jeep 9s. Okay, now we go on. We're good with that Jeep 9. We'll go down to road number. The road number on this engine is number 235. So we want to enter 2. In a minute, it'll go over to the next one. 30 and 5 is the last number. And then as it moves over to the 0, we hit this down key again. And that eliminates that. Okay, momentum. Oops, it went to. Momentum is 50. That's good. 50%. That means it will slow down. It won't stop immediately when you go to change directions and such. Okay, delay. Let's increase the delay a little bit. Let's increase it to 1.5 seconds. Okay, now we don't care about the motor normal direction until we hear whether it's sounding for reverse or for forward and then we can change that motor direction depending on that. The headlights same thing with that we're going to leave them at normal until we see how it reacts. Headlights are on we want the headlights on. Top speed 100 percent now this is where if you have somebody who's a child that you don't want them going let's say over 80 percent then you just press and hold this button until you get down to whatever you want, 80%. Okay? You can change that easily. So this is how you go in and change the speed if you want to bring it back up to 100%. And then you just scroll to the next position, start speed, and I always just leave that at zero. Now, speed's in steps. Now, three is just the base. I like to go, whoops, I like to go up to five steps. And I'll show you in a minute what that does. Speed on curves, you can have it slow down on curves. I never mess with that. Auxiliary function setup, that would be sounds if you have a sound board. Uh, with this one, you do not need to worry about that. Linking, that will be our next step, is we'll take the engine out, we'll link it to this uh, controller. And the way you start linking is you press the enter button. 
Now you see the arrows are going over. It's trying to link with something. It's not going to be able to because I don't have anything powered up right now. So it will even come up finally when it does get tired of this. It's going to show you failed. Okay, so now we're back at the main startup screen. <clears throat> you see this is cab number zero, which is what we're using for this unit. It is a single unit. It's not a multiple or MU, which you don't really need to worry about unless you're going to have two or three engines like an ABA or something like that set up. This is your GP9. It's engine number 235. Its top speed is 80% and the we never changed any of the curve speeds. So when you go to change speeds now, if you hit it up, it'll go up 5 miles per hour each time. 10, 15, 20. That was the steps that we set at 5 which is easier it goes down quicker so if the kids are running it it isn't a real slow pickup if you want to change that and go back to one or two you hit menu assign functions so you enter the assigned functions you scroll down <coughs> to top speed there's top speed you scroll down to steps. This is your speed steps. And you can decrease them. That's four. So let's try four. Four might be good. And menu brings you back to there. And menu again brings you back to here. So now when you press the speed, it goes up two and a half, five, seven, ten. So that's not a bad step either. So let's leave it on that for right now. And we'll press stop. Let's say you want to add another engine to here. And you want to add it. Say, leave cab zero as this Vogel. You want to have cab number one as a different engine. The only other way to do that is you go here to menu. You go down to add. It's MU is multiple units or single unit cabs. And you press the button for enter. Here at cab zero, you want cab one. That will be where you add your new engine. You go down here to the uh, link to the address, link address, and there's L41, there's L39, and you could use any of those. You set it on L39, press menu, Press menu again, and now cab one is L39. However, cab zero is the mogul, and cab two is the mogul. So that's how you add an engine to this. And then when you add that engine, you go to cab one, which is L39, press the menu. Sorry, that was distracting. Press the menu, which is assign functions. Press enter. There's your L39, your link address 39, on board, and you can change the name to whatever name is your next engine. You can add the road number to your next engine, and then when you get all the way down here, you go to linking, and you press the linking button when you press the little red button on whatever engine you're adding. And that's all there is to working these controllers. And we're going to go out and hook this up to the engine. Okay. All right, so we're ready to set up the new controller with the power car. So the roof just comes off nice and easily. Inside, you will see the base station with a connector for your Makita battery. There is a on-off switch here. Forward is on, back is off. You have your speaker. You have a Phoenix, I'm not sure which sound card that is, but that's a Phoenix sound card. And over on this side, you have an adjustment for the sound to go up and down. So, the first thing you do, move that out of the way. You'll drop in a Makita battery. Plug it in. And then turn the power on. So the soundboard is working. 
Now we turn on the controller. It's set on the GP9. And now we need to link this to this engine. So, the way to do that, again, is to press the memory, or press the menu. It says assign functions. You press enter. It's got the address, 49, all the information. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see linking. Now, there is a small button here. And you don't have to do this every time, only if you switch controllers. So once this is set, it should not be have to be changed. So I press the button on linking. It's starting to try and link. And I press that button until the red starts to flash. Then we watch this. And it says passed. Linking passed. Now we escape out of this by pressing the menu button twice. And that brings us back up to our main screen. <coughs> now, set the top on. And I don't remember what's what, but one, two, three, and four are your sequence buttons here. So one is your bell. Okay. It's set so you, when you turn, when you press it once, it turns the bell on. You have to press it a second time to turn the bell off. We can change that if you want. That's a single blast. Number two. Number three is just a, a blow off, is, is an air blow off. Number four. is a crossing whistle. Now, you see that it's in the direction to go to our left. Oh. Okay. I had to press stop. Now, one thing that I forgot to do is to make the connection. So, while it stopped, I forgot to connect the wires. And this has a clip here that can be levered to remove it. And a little tab right here. So the clip and the tab go together. And it's already coupled. So let's see how she goes. Press the increase. switch directions and back up.
that's how you control your engine. I'm going to back it up. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Let's go run a train. Oh yeah, I've got about a thousand feet of this track out now. About 500 feet in the backyard, another 500 out front. Yeah, when we do it, we do it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Be safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you down the rails, and uh, God bless.